Hi, I'm Lucy Reimer. And I'm Kathy Davini. And we're here with your Bradley B. With a frog in my throat. With a frog in your throat <laughs> um, on Father's Day weekend. There you go. All, all the Fs. <laughs> So tell us what's going on. Um, you know, at the museum, we just finished up bike camp this week. Nice. and um, Nobody is, got hurt. Nobody got hurt. Nobody ever gets hurt because they spend the first part of camp learning all about bike safety and the parts of a bike. And, um, of course, everyone brings their helmets and safety gear. Um, and Gina Simpson does such a great job um, teaching this camp. We split it up. We had junior bike camp at the beginning of the week for our littler campers. Mm -hmm. And then we had just bike camp, bike camp, at the end of the week for our more advanced riders, and everybody had such a great time. This is the third year that she has done that for us, and it's always such a hit. Of course, it was completely sold out um, because it was it was free, thanks to our wonderful sponsors, the Bachman Foundation, Jackson Furniture, um, Sherry Brown, and the Arts and Education Business Committee. Um, now, Sherry and the Arts and Education Business Committee, they were specifically for Missoula Children's Theater, but I still like to mention all of our sponsors every time because we love them. And because they give these children such a great opportunity and everybody needs to know bike safety. Yes, everybody does. You know, I, I saw an ad, it was actually about a, a, a it was a running ad um, about a national get out and move day or something like that. But apparently this generation of children move less than any generation ever before them. Um, so teaching your kids to be active and being conscious about uh, you know, giving them the tools that they need to feel safe riding a bike or getting out and running. or Well, that's health for a lifetime. Mm, it is. It is health for a lifetime because biking, I mean, it's easy on your knees. I should know. And if you're heavy, you can still do it. You can still do it. You can go to the Y and do the spin class if Paolo you're afraid of getting that. out there and road biking because I know it can be a little intense. I will just say <laughs> that my husband and his friend Robbie and their little group, they go and do this off-trail biking. And almost every time somebody ends up with a dislocated shoulder. Uh, I know. It is. You <laughs> but know, not, not Paolo or Robbie. They well, don't. Well, good, good. I can remember my sister when we were in high school, she decided to go mountain biking in Colorado with a group of friends that did it regularly, and she had never uh, done uh -oh. it. In fact, she probably didn't even ride a bike regularly. Did she at that survive? Point. Barely. I mean, <laughs> but literally barely. Like, she had a wreck, had to be taken to the hospital. Oh, no. Like, yeah, yeah. Concussion, you know. Wow. Yeah. But back then, they probably didn't have helmets. It didn't damage her much. <laughs> She's got a very hard head. No more than you did. <laughs> no, no more than I have throughout her life. No. <laughs> So what else have we got? Um, you know, ne our next camp coming up at the museum, and of course June is all about summer camps. Um, That's right. Is the Creative Discovery Museum is oh, coming up to do a camp at the end camp. of June. And big project happening this week at the museum. Um, if anyone's been downtown, you may have noticed some changes going on with our landscaping. That's um, right. We had some dead shrubs and some trees that were in our parking lot that uh, next to the building that were growing it up into our gutters oh. um, and some dead trees around the courtyard. And so we had a few of those removed. Nice. Um, and the city of Cleveland has donated us some nice fresh mulch. Wow. Um, which is wonderful because we have not had new mulch at the museum in a long time. And um, then we have had help from the fire department, the Bradley County Fire Department, um, McKinley Excavating, and um, the Boy Scouts, Troop 10, um, to help spread Fantastic. that mulch and get all of those, uh, you know, the dead trees and plants removed. Um, the landscaping at the museum hasn't been done in about 25 years. So while it's we time. haven't done like new landscaping, we're trying to do some things to um, get ready for it when we do um, and keep things looking presentable until that happens. So nice. um, that's what's going on at the museum uh, for now. What about the rest of Cleveland? Oh my gosh, so many fun things. This Hawassi Blue Way Rail to River Paddle event. Uh, it sounds like so much fun. That is going to be such a blast. So that is the 24th and the 25th of June. And you can take a paddle board or a kayak or whatever, mm -hmm. or you can rent them. And your ticket includes riding on the train to put in at Reliance. Okay. And then you come out and you have dinner in a band at Savannah Oaks Winery. 
That sounds wonderful. It's really a fun, fun thing. They have hiking every morning. They have yoga. It's a whole weekend event. Uh, it's like a, it's a retreat, really. <laughs> it's a retreat. Yeah. So tickets are only $50 to $100, depending on what you're doing. They have paddle tickets and non-paddle tickets where you can just go and enjoy the food and the music, okay. which I think is great because not everybody in the family is a paddler. Yeah, so this is at the Hiawassee, right? It is. Like where you would normally see people floating the Hiawassee. Yes. Or you, do in the fun yaks. You can find all the information. This is a fundraiser for Blue Way. Blue Way, yes. okay. And that this is a multi-recreational event and you can buy your tickets on Eventbrite. Okay. So I think this is an amazing opportunity for a weekend reliance to Delano. Okay. So there you go. That that's, is, I mean, that's a great, that is a wonderful weekend. And you know what? While you're up there, you could go stay. If you didn't want to drive back to Cleveland, you could stay at the Okoye Riverside Farm, but they're probably booked if you haven't made plans already. That is one of our new favorite places. It is. <laughs> we just learned all about it last week. <laughs> And we're not done talking about oh, them yes, yet. Yes, <laughs> because we want to go on a field trip there as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Another thing going on June 22nd is the nine-hole outing at Falcon Point that benefits artists here. Mm -hmm. And I know the museum is starting to talk with artists here about maybe getting together and doing some fun things possibly in the future. Possibly in the yes. future. Mm -hmm. So that would be a, a fun deal. All this money goes toward artists here partnership, which is working to create more opportunities for all different artists, all like different the museum. Artists. Yep, yep. So it's good. We're, we're glad to support them. Um, Next on, on board, we have that City Fields is taking donations for the backpacks, the 500 backpacks that they give away. And there will be a picnic back to school thing July 29th at Mosby Park. But they are collecting backpack things ten dollars a backpack now okay. so you can get in touch with city fields but one of the biggest things we need to talk about is tomorrow the okoe cigar lounge oh paint smoke and sip event interesting and they're giving prizes it's a sock hop theme and you can dress up and they give prizes to the best dress it's 65 dollars and that includes your canvas food, a cigar, and drink. Wow. So our friends at Ocoee Cigar Lounge yes. wanted us to share that, and we love Chuck and Abu, so we're we happy do. to do it. Such nice guys. And so yes. this is one of the things they do, I think, um, to cater a little bit more to the female cigar smokers, right? Yes, because you'd be surprised there are a lot. There are a lot. Um, and then tonight, September Song is playing at oh. First Friday, which I we've had at the museum. I this was their week. Yes, so the, that is tonight, 7 to 9, First Street Square. Mm -hmm. So much going on. They are, September Song is, is one of our favorite bands around Cleveland. You may have seen um, just the Kimballs, um, Andrew and Lou, um, playing at, um, you know, a lot of the fundraisers mm -hmm. around town. Or, They're very kind yeah, and they generous. They are very kind. They are wonderful musicians, mm -hmm. and they are just so much fun. You're going to know all of their songs. They're going to make you want to get up and dance, um, and I'm just so happy that they're going to be at First Street Square. Um, now, what time Seven to start? nine, Seven First to nine. Street Square, and that's tonight. The Okoe Cigar Lounge tomorrow starts at 6 p.m. And you need to go buy the Cigar Lounge to register or sign up for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that sounds good. Well, today on our show, we've got somebody a little different coming in. More different than we are? More different than we are. I, nobody's more different than we are. <laughs> but it's a coffee shop that offers something a little different. Um, and it is Plus Ultra Coffee. Um, Roy Callahan is going to be joining us, and his coffee shop is an anime-themed coffee shop. And now, they, remind me what anime that is. That is Japanese animation. So he's got... And your girls are very involved. My girls are very involved in the Japanese animation. <laughs> but what I <laughs> love, love is that the museum had that really fun event yes. teaching kids to draw To draw that. anime characters mm -hmm. because it's a very popular style of art. Mm -hmm. It's very fun to draw. The characters are very cute. Um, but he's going to be on telling us all about 
what's going on at Plus Ultra Coffee and um, when they're open and how you can take part in it. Because he's starting to have little events. He's just getting off the ground, so go and support him if you get the opportunity to help launch his business as he's new. Yes. And he's in the Bradley Square Mall in the back by the movie theater. Mm -hmm. And he has a, patio, has a patio. So you can go and read one of those books and sip coffee mm -hmm. and enjoy the day now that we're coming into beautiful weather. Absolutely, absolutely. So we will be right back with Roy Callahan from Plus Ultra Coffee. See you in a minute. See you in a minute. And we're back with Roy Callahan from Plus Ultra Coffee, which is new to Bradley Square Mall, right? Yeah, so I've been open since the end of uh, January, but we're okay. just starting to like really get out there. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I hate it that sometimes it takes so long, but what we hear is that you've got a really cool thing going on over there that you're not just the normal coffee shop like the others. And I mean, none of them are the same, but that you've got something a little different. Right. So my big uh, differentiating factor between me and other coffee shops mm -hmm. is that my coffee shop is anime themed. Fun. And so uh, all of the drinks on my menu are named after different anime characters. And uh, I've got a small manga library that people can like read manga while they're in there. And like a community chalkboard that people draw uh, different anime characters on. My children are going to freak out. Like, it is <laughs> like they are huge. Huge anime fans. Like, well, you just huge. had that event at the museum where kids got to learn how to draw, to draw anime. Right. And so art studios so came cool. in and did that. And um, well, let's see. I mean, of course, Sophie's favorite is Attack on Titan. That's the one she watched. And we've, I saw your My Hero Academia book. We've watched all of those. And um, of course, Naruto, like all the Naruto stuff. And we couldn't make it through Boruto because... That's fair. We pretend <laughs> like that doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We keep... We, it's my daughter Sophie's like, the manga, apparently things get better in it. And we just have to hold on. And I was like, I can't. But uh, anyways... You've got two fans. I will um, definitely be bringing them by. So um, tell us about your coffee and what's special about your coffee. Awesome. So uh, I get my coffee from Inman Street Coffee. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is unique about them is they get it direct trade. So their coffee roaster gets the coffee straight from the coffee farmers. And because there isn't much of a supply chain to it, they are able to offer those coffee farmers anywhere from five to 10 times as much as fair trade. Oh, wow. And so fair trade is like a global minimum wage, which I mean like minimum wage doesn't really cut it like in a first world country nowadays. So imagine like what it's like in uh, other countries. Sure. So uh, this is able to pay those farmers a living wage, which is uh, pretty cool because uh, the coffee is already making an impact from the beginning of the supply chain. And then my middleman being Inman, they are a social ministry of the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. And so the proceeds that they're getting for uh, me buying the coffee from them, they're able to use it to help uh, local people in our community. Mm -hmm. Well, that is, uh, yes, that is great. So it's great to know that when you're at Plus Ultra Coffee, you're giving back to the community as well. So, so that's really good. Um, well, tell us, what are some of the names, the fun names of your coffee drinks? Yeah, so uh, I uh, kind of did uh, anime puns. I've got my menu here. So, right. like, for example, my chai, I call it a chai Ken, which is like a Dragon Ball Z reference. Okay. And then uh, my matcha latte is called a leaf hurricane. If you've watched Naruto, you know what that reference mm -hmm. is. <laughs> and so I tried to, like, make it subtle, but then also, like, on my menu, I put what everybody else calls the drink below it. That way, if anime is not your thing, you can still just, like, order your drink in peace. Yeah. <laughs> And I see you've got boba tea, which is my daughter Elise's favorite yes. beverage ever. Um, I keep telling her, I'm like, you can't drink that every day. <laughs> it's kind of, um, it's, it's um, I don't know. I, I'm not a fan of boba, but it's like very creamy, very rich. Yeah, and I wasn't even originally going to uh, do boba. So like I've got like 10 years experience in coffee, uh, mm -hmm. but I had no experience in boba. But I'm like... I'm opening an anime shop. I kind of have to have kinda boba. I have to have boba. So I have a brown sugar milk tea and a mango fruit tea. And I actually sell more boba than I do coffee. Wow. Now, what about food? Do you have any food or is it just coffee? So right now I have muffins, but I'm actually working on getting a lunch menu now. So the other thing that's different from me and other coffee shops that I'm hoping to remedy is right now I'm my only employee while I try to get the thing off the ground. Right. So I've slowly been adding a little bit here and there at a time, but I have to like keep in mind that um, I have to be able to do it all myself. 
and uh, oh. it's a real feast or famine sort of thing. So I could be in the shop by myself for like an hour, and then I could have like a group of eight come in. And if I had to make them like a sandwich and a coffee, yeah, that then... would be hard. Well, the reason I'm asking is because I go with a group of girls to the movie every Tuesday. And that's how I saw your shop, because you're visible from going to the movie. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and I am closed on Tuesdays right now, but I just put out a sign and started offering 10% off uh, with a movie stub. Oh, nice. And uh, depending on how that deal is received, I might try to get Tuesdays up and going again because there is that $5 day. Well, that's good to know for everybody else that goes to the movie to save your stub and you can get maybe 10% off your coffee. Yeah, and I'm not even picky, so if you want to bring it in like the day after you go to the movie, feel free to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because we get out late. It's uh, You probably aren't open when we get out. Right, so I am open until 9 o'clock. Uh, so depending on uh, what showtime you go to, I might still be open. Um, and uh, that's kind of like what I was going for with the shop. Like I know that morning hours are the best hours for coffee shops, but Cleveland like off the top of my head has at least 12 other coffee shops it's like right. not even including starbucks and duncan so uh, i wanted to kind of be more of a entertainment centric model because uh, cleveland doesn't really have a lot of that at all yeah uh, and then also we have a ton of second and third shift workers in cleveland and uh, lots of the coffee shops close at like six so i wanted to provide some extra hours in the evening for them as well, well That's i can great. remember like when i was growing up i grew up in nashville um tennessee and they had bongo java there and you, i mean you never went to bongo java in the morning i'm sure there are people that did but we never did yeah we always went in the evening and we would see like they, they had like an acoustic music series um, that would come in there and, um, you know, it was just the artsy late night scene. But when I was in high school, at least, and younger, I never did coffee in the morning. I always, it was always an evening activity. Yeah, Liza drank coffee mm -hmm. all through college at night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so good. Tell us about some of the things that you have going on at the coffee shop that are not um, just coffee or manga. And, and by the way, I will say this for all of those out there in Radio Land that we are here with Roy Callahan again from Plus Ultra Coffee. It's a new coffee shop that's in Bradley Square Mall. Um, and it's a little bit different from our normal coffee shops in town. So we're enjoying learning all about the anime, um, the manga, um, and the great coffee that he serves there and some additional activities that would be a little bit fun to go see as well. Tell us about those. Yeah. So uh, right now I have an event every Friday. Uh, so this uh, coming Friday, Friday is uh, Improv Chattanooga is coming in to do a show. Mm -hmm. And then uh, later on this month, I have live music. Uh, mm -hmm. Luke Lee is coming to perform. He uh, does music at Lee University. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of music? So my coffee shop is pretty small, and I like to have like the backup plan of being able to do it inside should it rain. Uh, so it's usually just like acoustic sets. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just because that's kind of like uh, what I can work with at the moment. We do it on the patio if the weather permits, and uh, that's pretty nice and spacious. Uh, but basically just kind of like uh, the last person that came in was like folky indie. Uh, I'm not really too picky about it. My thought process on it is like I just make sure they don't get stage fright, and like I'm trying to get my start, so it's cool to like let other people try to get their start right, as well. Right, sure. Um, and, and, and what does the improv group do? So uh, Improv Chattanooga is a, a troupe out of Chattanooga that uh, they give the audience a slips of paper and the audience writes down suggestions and uh, throughout the show they do different sorts of improv games kind of like whose line is it anyways and they take the audience suggestions to kind of like guide that so uh, everything is like right from the cuff uh, just like in the moment. Uh, they're pretty funny. They're they actors. Yeah, you could yeah. say that. Actors, comedians, mm -hmm. just people. <laughs> yeah, so uh, some of them do yeah. have theater backgrounds, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it's kind of just, uh, I mean, it's improv, so like every skit can look different. You never know what's going to happen, uh, which is uh, kind of half of the fun behind it. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. It's not like it's anime specifically themed, and mm -hmm. uh, that's another thing about my events in general is I try to do at least one a month that fits my niche, but then I also try to do a bunch of mainstream stuff as well so that the rest of the community can uh, enjoy my shop. Mm -hmm. Well, and for think, people that don't know what anime is, what would you 
How would you respond to that? Okay, uh, so manga is Japanese comic books, and then anime... Okay, one of those, I'll hand, hold it up so people can see it. And then anime is cartoons that are based off of that manga. So it's pretty similar to like originally there was like Batman and Spider-Man comics. Right. And now we have a ton of like media that involves those characters. And it's the same way. It's just uh, comic book characters that are based out of Japan. Uh, One Piece uh, specifically... Uh, as of a few years ago, has passed Batman and Superman as the highest selling comic uh, in history, which is pretty significant because it's 60 years younger. And then as of last year, it passed Stranger Things as the most watched TV show in the world. Really? You said One Piece? Mm -hmm. It's a show about um, a pirate that is looking for a treasure called the One Piece. Oh, okay. And, uh, it is one of the longest running shonens. It started, uh, I believe, in 97 in Manga 99 wow. for the anime and is still currently running. We just got episode 1063 on Sunday. Good gracious. That is a long running show. So, so I know what was so cool for, for my girls who are, like I mentioned, anime fans, when, we, when they started watching Naruto, they were this about the same age as the characters in the show oh. and then you kind of grow up with these characters if you don't binge watch it if you binge watch it it can get you know <laughs> it right. gets away from you you speed pass, um, you speed pass. <laughs> but um, you know I think it's neat with some of these um, animes that you know you really do if you start watching at the beginning when you're a kid you develop as these characters develop and and it you kind of get a relationship with a friendship. Yeah. You feel like you really know them. Um, we, they were very attached like people to that did one. with friends. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Except these are cartoons. Yeah, they're cartoons. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're good though, and the animation's good, and and usually they have sweet little themes. A lot of times about friendship, <laughs> I've discovered, mm -hmm. and how to be a good person. Um, so that's, that's just good. what I would say. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're so close to Cleveland State. And a lot of people at Cleveland State <clears throat> are really involved in this kind of thing. Have you seen that customer find you yet? I've had uh, some Cleveland State students and some Lee students mm -hmm. uh, come in. And uh, I've noticed that that demographic are the ones that like predominantly will like actually sit in the shop and like read a manga with their coffee. Uh, and uh, which is kind of encouraging because I was kind of worried at first that like Cleveland might just want another coffee shop, but seeing people like actually like engage in the theme that I gave it has mm -hmm. been. Uh, That's great. That's been yeah. cool. That should be rewarding. So I know you said a manga library. Are these for sale, or is it simply like a sit down and read a manga? So it's just a sit down and read a manga. Uh, the reason that I'm not selling them is because some of them were like donated to my library, and so I don't oh. really think that that would be right. uh, sure. very uh, ethical. And uh, I think that I think that like our society in general has just gotten into so much of a hurry that I like to have things in my shop that encourage people to slow down. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't want to sell off everything that I've got. Um, sure. With that being said, I am working on some partnerships with uh, different artists to uh, provide things that I can sell. Uh, for example, my friend Matilda made this. Uh, it's what I kind of uh, use for like the back of my business cards, but uh, we just oh, that worked something great. out Ew, that, how uh, cute that is. I can uh, sell them uh, in 8x10s and 12x18s. Mm -hmm. And so with this, I guess with every punch, you get an award at the end. Yes. Yeah, so um, this, I've, so I tried to like literally theme everything. So if you watch anime, this is even a nod to it. So my punch card: if you buy seven drinks, you're collecting the Dragon Balls throughout it. And then in the show Dragon Ball Z, when you collect the Dragon Balls, you get to make a wish. So after you've gotten seven drinks, you get a free drink. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I just really packed this in with as much as I could. So my social media information's on there. A little Great. Uh, piece of art that's unique to my shop. Uh, so I've got uh, stuff like this that I'm working on. And then I've got my own brand that's now available for sale. I've got uh, mugs and uh, my own personal coffee blend that's unique to my shop. And then uh, I have Funkos that are consigned as uh, well. So. Uh, 
I'm slowly adding that stuff, but I am trying to be cautious to keep my shop a coffee shop that's anime themed rather than an anime shop that With sells coffee. coffee. Right. Um, okay, yes. But if you are out there and you have read these books and you're finished with them, you would take the donations for your shop. Is that right? Yeah, I sure would. I would have to read it over. Um, not all manga is appropriate for mm -hmm. uh, yeah. all age yeah. groups. Uh, but I mean, I'm pretty familiar with what's what and I uh, would be grateful for that. That's the reason why my uh, library is so diverse because I originally just started with like mainstream shonen and people were like, hey, can I leave this Legend of Zelda manga or can I leave uh, these shoujo beats which are more for a female demographic? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah, well that is great. Well, thank you so much, Roy. Um, Again, for everyone out there um, listening on The Buzz, uh, we are here with Roy Callahan, who's been telling us all about Plus Ultra Coffee, the new anime-themed coffee shop in town um, that um, has some more late-night hours than some of our other coffee shops. Um, tell everybody before we have to go, because we're about out of time today, what are your uh, store hours and where exactly are you located in Bradley Square Mall? Okay, so I'm open from Wednesday to Saturday from 12 to 9, and I'm open on Sundays from 12 to 6. I am located in the back parking lot of uh, the mall, like if you were going to the movie theater. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see my patio, and there's a big 14-foot uh, flag that says coffee on it. Okay, great, great. Well, I hope you all go out and visit Roy at Plus Ultra Coffee. Um, you're the only person working there, so you will get to see the man himself <laughs> if you go. <laughs> but in the meantime, um, go there, get coffee, and then come downtown and see me at the museum. Um, we've got and, a lot going on and down there. And tell us about your experience. Yes, tell us about your experience. <laughs> um, of course, it is Father's Day coming up this weekend, so don't forget to stop by the museum gift gallery. We've got some great gifts for Dad. Um, beef jerky making kits, oh. hot sauce making kits, oh. little cocktail kits that are in little tin cans. Oh, that's fun. It has everything you need to mix a cocktail except the alcohol. Um, so uh, come come down. There's some interesting stuff in there, new things that we've added. Um, and... Uh, you know, have a great Father's Day. So we will see you next time on The Bradley Beat. Bye-bye.